So, we can also utilize the virtual work method to write or to come up with the same equations. And the virtual work method, if you remember, it was solving this, the following set of equations. The internal virtual work is equal to the external virtual work. And by taking the multipliers of, of when you have your, you, you assume that your virtual displacement is a function of those virtual unknowns. By taking the multipliers of those virtual unknowns on the left and equating them to the multipliers of the virtual unknowns on the right, we were able to get a system of equations that allows us to find the actual unknowns which were a naught, a one, and so on. <coughs> and the internal virtual work was written as the integral of sigma g epsilon star r g integrated over the volume. The external virtual work, we only have a distributed load is equal to cx1 multiplied by the displacement, the virtual displacement, integrated over the length. The approximate displacement is equal to u1 and 1 plus u2 and 2 plus u3 and 3 plus u4 and 4. And now I'm going to now start utilizing matrices because that's uh, how the, 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 the the, the method is programmed and one and two and three and four multiplied by u one, u two, u three, and u four. And this matrix that's four by one, sorry, one by four. And this is four by one. This matrix I'm going to call M, and the other matrix I'm going to call UE. These are functions of X, and U1, U2, U3, and U4 are the degrees of freedom of the system. If I know U1, U2, U3, U4, I know everything. I know this. this I know my displacement. I know the strain. The only non-zero is this epsilon one, one the only non-zero strain component is epsilon one, one which is du by dx1. These are constants, they're not function of x, so they're going to stay. And these are the functions of x, du1 by dx1, du2 symbol or the letter B for this matrix, whether I'm using one dimensions or two dimensions. The, dis the, uh, the virtual displacement, that I can use anything for the virtual displacement, but I will use the virtual displacement by having the same form as U, because that's the only available uh, because that's the space of available functions. I've restricted myself to these types, to this form. And so this will be equal to the virtual displacement, which can have any form. I have this form. Now, I don't, I, I'm not going to play with n1, n2, n3, n4. These are functions of x. I'm going to play with my degrees of freedom. And 
you find I can write it like this, you start transpose and transpose. Because this is one by four, four by one. If you make that row into a column, make, make that row into a column, and make that column into a row, so transpose them, you get the same value. And similarly, epsilon one star, is equal to d u star by dx1, that's the virtual string, will be equal to u star transpose d transpose. The internal virtual work. of 0 L, sigma 1, epsilon 1, 1 star. I don't have any other non-zero stresses or strains, which should be equal to A. Instead of sigma 1, I'm going to put E, epsilon 1, 1. And instead of, uh, so I'm going to put epsilon 1, 1 star, U star transpose, B transpose, so I use this to grab one star, grab some one, one, I'm going to use B. And I'm going to take this outside. So this is the internal virtual work. I'm just going to write it here so that you don't forget. This is 1 by 4. This is 4 by 1. This is 1 by 4. This is 4 by 1. So at the end, you get 1 by 1. Just the number sigma one multiplied by epsilon one one star. <coughs> the external virtual work is equal to C X one. Forget that this is one by four, and this is four by one. Now, what will happen if I say the internal virtual work is equal to the external virtual work? When we use the internal virtual work is equal to the external virtual work, we have to take the multiplier of each component in that new star and equal to the multiplier of each component of the U star on the other side. This is a, a these are, there are four U stars. Because there are four U stars, I should get four equations. And these four equations will look like this. Equation 
A E B transpose B DX one U B is equal to N transpose C X one U star is the function, it's equal to two matrices multiplied by each other. Okay? So n and the matrix of four by one. Okay? Is that okay? Is this one okay? No, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I, know. Yeah, must be. I understand. Yeah. So this is fine? Yeah. So right here, U star is this one. ones are vectors and which ones are tensors or vectors and which ones are matrices and so this is four by one one by four so this is we'll talk about it a bit this is four by one and this is four by one and this these are exactly the same equations you obtain So this also looks like this k AOE is equal to that where this is a four by four matrix. This is a four by one vector. This is a four by one vector. And my system is known once I solve the system of equations. on this uh, system that we came up with. The type of approximation that I use is called the C0 function. What's a C0 function? function I'd like to approximate this approximation even continuous. I'm approximating a function 
using those bars. Those bars, as the interface between those two bars, function on the left, but not even the function on the right. So it's not even continuous. That's why it's called C minus 1. It's, it's continuous, but I cannot differentiate it. Why? Because the slope on the left is not equal to the slope on the right. Right here, the slope here is equal to this value. The slope on the left, the right, or on the left, it has a different value. So continuous, but not different. There are other types of approximations. C2 and so on, but these I do not use in the finite element analysis. Other approximations I use in other meshless methods or other types of approximations or other uh, calorific methods where I use uh, other functions. For example, that you can differentiate once. So the, the, the function has this first slope is equal on both sides, but the second slope is not. So that would be a C1 function. An example of C2 functions, for example, would be so easy and so simple. C1 and C2 would have more complicated computations and the concept of zones elements would be lost or too complicated. In a C0 approximation, I can simply look at this element or zone. What happens in this zone? Everything in this zone is isolated from the west, rest of the world by the ends of by what happened at its ends. If you, if you just isolate, if I isolate this element or zone, and I tell you what the displacement here is and what the displacement here is, I will know everything about this element. I will know the stress, the strain forces everything on this element. I don't need to know anything else about the domain. So I'm able to isolate elements because of the use of C0. If I use C1 or C2 where things are smooth, then elements start talking to each other. Because the, the strain in this element will be function of U1, U2, and the displacement in the neighboring elements as well. function of the displacement of the neighboring element, I lose, I lose that, that element that I can isolate at this. I can still have zones, but it's a little bit more complicated.
the way we're doing the final element analysis, the unknowns, are the displacements and the knowns. And these are the degrees called, and, and they are called degrees of freedom of the system. Now, what happens when I try to find the stresses? The stress is equal to E du by dx. Now this was u. du by dx is the slope. So this is, let's look, this is a positive slope, so I will get the stress here. This is a negative slope, I'm going to get a negative stress here. This is a zero slope, I will get zero stress here. Positive, even higher, maybe the same, zero. So what do you see in the stresses? The stresses are not continuous. And as we talked about, we, I think I mentioned this before, all the finite element analysis softwares, when they draw the contour of the stresses, they give you very smooth, very nice stresses. But the reality is, at the boundaries between the elements, the stresses are not equal. But what they do is that they take what you have here and approximate. So this is this value. Right here, this and this, you take an average. Right here, zero and this, you get an average and so on. So, averaged stresses. And you can average the stresses in many ways. You can average the stresses at the nodes, you can average the stresses at what we call integration points that we will cover later. structure analysis problem with any approximation, you will get a system of equation that has the following has the following form. Okay. These are two matrices multiplied by each other. The transpose of a matrix multiplied by another matrix. This is symmetric because B transpose B. If you take the transpose, it will be equal to B transpose B. So these are symmetric. So K is symmetric. For other, this was a one-dimensional problem, so that's why we had B transpose B. In the next little while, we'll cover higher dimensions, and we'll see that the as long as the material is elastic, then K will always be symmetric.
as we said, we're able to isolate our, our zone. We're going to take each zone and call it an element. And we're going to take each element and call the edges <coughs> its local. We're going to look at the element and call it, look at it in its local uh, coordinate system and look at the, at the displacement at the nodes and call it their, the, its local degrees of freedom. So I can isolate element 1, or let's say element 2. So you isolate element 2, you put CX1 on it, the distributed load, and the displacement on this element is equal to U1 N1 plus U2 N2 on this element. Unknowns are U1, U2, U3, U4, and U5. Node 1 will only get forces from element 1. And node 1. Node 2. Here you get k element one component one one, k element one component one two, k element one component two one, k element one component two two. So 
So this stiffness component comes from element 1. From element 2, I have k element 2. k element 2. k element 2. Component 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2. Multiplied by u2, u3. This is U2, U3. This goes here. So plus K element 2, 1, 1. Right here you get K element 2, 1, 2. K element 2, 2, 1. K element 2, 2, 2. And so on. So you get a system of equations that can be solved. So you can do the integrations locally on each element. After you do the integrations locally on each element, you form a local stiffness matrix. After you form a local stiffness matrix, you assemble the local stiffness matrix in a global stiffness matrix uh, as shown here. So this is because each of those small ones were symmetric, this global one is symmetric. K. Which will be 5 by 5, multiplied by the degrees of freedom, which is 5 by 1, will be equal to F 5 by 1. What are the properties of K? this is happening is because of the choice of our shape functions. We chose our shape functions or uh, the n functions. Let's look at back at those n functions. n1 is 1 only in this element and 0 everywhere else or 0 far because it's equal to 0 at the far uh, nodes. When you do the integral of n1, you get lots of zeros. So this is easier to solve. This compared to the other approximations that we used in our A1x plus the polynomial. If we use a polynomial approximation, your matrix is not going to be sparse, it's going to be full. Invertibility, and we discussed this in the first lecture. structure with a vector of displacements and when I multiply this k by the structure I will get zero forces. Or 
Or linear, or not necessarily linear, linear or elastic. Uh, stable. So semi-positive definite, do you guys remember the definition of semi-positive definite? Slide this in the first lecture. So we're going to if structure is stable, K is positive definite. Visit first. Represent physically. These numbers physically represent the forces I need to put on the structure so that U2 is equal to. If I put here U2 equal 1, U1 is equal to U2 is equal to U3, U1 is equal to U3 is equal to U4 is equal to 0. If I use, put this displacement on the structure, the forces required. To put such displacement on the structure, when you multiply this matrix by this uh, vector, you'll get this row. This this one, so two, two, k two two, k three two, and k four two. So this represent this column represents <coughs> the forces required. Such that u2 or the corresponding this the degree of freedom is one, and the remaining ones are equal to zero. So, so far, we have used the C0 approximation that looks like this. I can use a slightly better C0 approximation. So this is a C0 because it's not continuous here. 
So we use the C0 approximation by doing the following. But a better C0 approximation by doing the following. On each zone, I'm going to put a nonlinear function, a parabola. neighboring elements. So the elements are isolated from their neighboring elements at these nodes. But then I'm also going to introduce additional nodes in the middle of each element. Such that the displacement here is a function rather than the average of the, the two on the sides. It will be our LB function of those three variables, which will allow it to be a parabola. So I'm going to add an extra degree of freedom in the middle of each element, or an extra node in the middle of each element. So how am I going to do that? On the element. Zero and the other nodes. 
10 joules. We'll have the following form for N3. These functions, these are three parameters. These functions will have the following form. N1 will be equal to x1 minus l over 2 equals 0. And this line is x1 minus l 0. And this line x1 equal 0. So n1 is equal to x1 minus l over 2 multiplied by x1 minus l. divided by L squared over 2. So when you multiply this line by this line, you get this N1. So X1 minus L over 2. So you get it equal to 0 when X1 is equal to L over 2. And you get it equal to 0 when X1 is equal to L. And you get it equal to 1 when X1 is equal to 0. So negative L over 2 multiplied by negative L. It's L squared over 2 divided by L squared over 2, you get N1. So this is the first parabola for this first chief function. N3, similarly, will be equal to I want it 0 here, and I want it 0 here. So x1, x1 minus L2 divided by, so I want it 1 when x is equal to L. So L minus L over 2 is L over 2 multiplied by L, so L squared over 2. And N2 is equal to 0 here, 0 here, so this is x1, and this is x1 minus L, divided by, I want it 0 when L, when x is equal to L over 2, so L over 2, so negative L squared over. And these are the three shape functions. And don't forget that we are still using a C0 approximation. This is still a C0 approximation. It's a better approximation, but it's still a C0. It's better because I can model non parabolic behavior within the zone, but between the zones, the stresses or the the gradients are not equal. And the virtual work principle for the element will produce This is a 3 by 1 vector equal to f1, f2, f3, which is a 3 by 1 vector. These are the normal degrees of freedom, uh, sorry, normal forces.
this is the stiffness matrix. And here you have an E. All right. So, yes. How did you find the N1, N2, N3? Actually, I meet with the previous N1, N2, N3. What do you mix with the previous? For the element, we had N1 previously for the previous. For the linear one? Yes. For the linear one, let's look at the linear one. Looks like this. I have only so for linear case. This is N one. This is N two. Okay. N one is equal to zero. Uh, is equal to one. Is equal to zero in x. Is equal to l. And equal to one when the x is equal to zero. Okay. And n two is equal to zero when x one is zero. And one when x one is zero. So these are linear functions. Linear case. You you get this graph. Is that okay? Do you know how did you find it? <laughs> <laughs> so for the linear one, it is simple. I can imagine that it's yes. minus l for zero is. So let's say what I did originally was I did this. Okay? I said you I said I replaced E not E1 and E2 with E1, E2 and E3. Okay? Does that make sense? Then I found a huge equation that has this form. And then I realized that I can find n1 and n2 and n3 using this form. Three equations and three unknowns. Yes. These three equations, three unknowns, give me those n1, n2, and n3. But I realized that I can get those n1, n2, and n3 using this form. Okay? Okay, we'll give you five minutes.